Thank you, Andreas, for the excellent introduction to the speech aimed to analyze if ICOs are going to kill the stock markets. If we look what the ICO is, and if we look what the initial public offering is, then actually they serve the same meaning. It's about enabling masses investing into the ideas or investing into the projects. IPO, initial public offering, let's say 10 years ago, was a synonym of crowdfunding. It was about the crowd being enabling, entering into the growing ideas. Now the ICO is actually serving the same purpose. It's about enabling investors, or should I say wallets, investing into the uh, companies. But the stock markets are the ones who enable investing into the ICO, IPOs. But the ICOs are very much decentralized. So maybe the stock markets are the symbols in the capital markets of decentralization. All of this has becoming possible because of the technology called blockchain. And this is exactly what Andreas was talking about. It's a powerful technology to provide the trust. It's a technology that instead of humans and human institutions say that your assets now belong to me or my assets belong to me and now I can transfer it to you. So it is a big shift what we see in the future it is that the trust will be provided by the technology instead of the human intermediates. And blockchain, when it was born, it was born global. And that is, again, a very, very big shift because stock markets, in its meaning, are quite local and quite regional. And maybe, because the blockchain has sort of looking for the killer application, maybe the ICOs are the killer applications. Maybe the ICOs are the tool for the decentralization. When we talk about the tokens and the coins, they're basically, there are four types of the tokens and the coins. The one that is well known are the currencies. And the currency is sort of performing like the cur currencies, but not exactly. The second side are the tokens that represent the assets. Assets like real estate, assets like diamonds, and assets like equity. And this is where Fundabeam is uh, operating. We tokenize startup equity and trade tokens that are backed by the startup equity. But in between, there are two big groups of coins or tokens as well. It's the rights-backed tokens, and the examples are 10x and DAO. And this is where the stock market regulators, or let's say um, financial regulators, very much think these are acting as the securities. And, and then the last one is the utility token. And this is the most interesting token. And I suggest you to search for a utility token or specifically the protocol token. These are the tokens that most probably gonna shift us and gonna teach us the way how we live in the future. It's going to be different type of the tokens that represent different type of the assets. So we're not just going to trade and exchange with each other the assets, which we are so much used to now, but we're going to trade like, check the file coin, like the tokens of the filing space, with the other tokens representing totally different value, with no centralization in between, and with no currency in between. And this, I think, what is going to make the stock market's life in the future a bit difficult. Now, if we dig into the uh, numbers, this 
is the global start of funding 2017. The US is obviously leading with 60 billion invested into the startups. Europe is very much lagging behind, only 16 million. And Asia is growing. This is the circle that is growing every year. Um, and ICOs are just a tiny little part of it. But again, it's growing. Now, when we go into the stock markets and when we go into the IPOs business, then the very interesting thing, what I actually discovered even for myself, is that US is not the leading stock market country, but Asia is the leading stock market country. And stock markets is nothing but the liquidity provider for the private investments. Now, if the ICOs come, maybe it's going to be the liquidity provider without any centralization. So what's going to happen? Will the ICO skill stock markets or not? First, what we still need to understand is what is token. There is no common understand what the token is. Token can be anything representing a scam, it can be representing equity, it can be representing a membership or protocol token. So what is it? In stock markets, we know what we get. Second thing, who is your investor? And this is called know your customer anti-money laundering. In ICOs, very much is based on the pseudonymous investments. And this is where the regulators are actually cross about the ICOs. And this is where stock markets are actually good. They know who the investors are. What's again still working in the stock markets is the reporting. Actually, we know what we get, and we know how our underlying investments are doing. But that is basically it. Because the red lights for the stock markets and for the way we live is the intermediates. And this is where I started, and this is where Andreas started, is that intermediates are actually supporting the centralized system. It's somebody else who is saying that your assets belong to you, and if I want to trade with you, then this intermediate takes your assets and transfers to me, and there's another intermediate takes my funds and transfers to you. Because of the blockchain, we can do it without any intermediates. And this is something that definitely forces stock markets and stock exchange operators to be much more efficient. The second big thing is the reach. Blockchain as a technology and services built on the blockchain were born global. There is no localization. While the stock markets are very local, they are regulated by the local regulators and uh, their service providers, starting from the brokers, are very local. Blockchain is global. And the third is stock markets are very overregulated. And again, coming back to Andreas, if you would like to change the world, you have to start with breaking the rules. And if you think about the fintech, then fintech in the whole world is the most regulated sector. And do you think it's getting better? No, it's getting worse. It's going to more and more regulation are going to introduce. So will ICOs come to the market? This is the best picture, I think, that's going to describe 2018. There's going to be some enlightening. There's going to be some breaking, breaking the rules, breaking the myth of the best uh, ICOs so far. Look at the Desus case. There's going to be some uh, breaking the borders. There's going to be some mess, but it's definitely going to be super, super interesting year 2018 to provide this new tool for the enterprises, but not just the enterprises, but for every different community builders and every different product and um, services builders to use the ICO, but to use it, use it in a meaningful uh, way and actually to challenge the centralized uh, system. 
So go global. Thank you.